Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about Bible prophecy, particularly that X across America that happens by way of a lunar eclipse ending in the year 2024, and some recent revelations that we're getting from the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation chapter 12. Now, before I get started, I want to warn you guys, this is a scripture based channel. This is a fact based channel. We don't really care what people think, feel or believe, especially when those thoughts, feelings and beliefs are contrary to what the scripture actually says. And I say that because we're going to be talking about the African-Americans and their relationship to the 400 years of American slavery, understanding that a large portion of the people who watch our channel are descendants of Japheth and Ham. In other words, they are natural born Gentiles. But anybody who's been around our channel for any length of time know that race doesn't matter over here on our channel. We recognize that the name Israel is a spiritual name mistakenly placed on a race of people, but it was actually supposed to mean all of humanity, like we see here in this verse on the screen. And even though one may have the genetic markers of the descendants of Jacob or Israel, we understand that if they are not obeying the scripture, then they're going to be counted as rebels and they're going to die with the heathen. All while Gentiles who have converted over to spiritual Israel will take their place in the kingdom of heaven. So don't be offended as I pull out verses to support the idea of the modern day bloodline tribes of Judah and the half tribe of Benjamin. I only do so because it is absolutely necessary for this discussion on this 400 year prophecy. And besides all of that, for anybody that's actually keeping the commandments of the Bible, they understand that race doesn't matter anyway. But let's get on into it. What prompted me to do this class is a comment that I got from a viewer named Shamar. Normally I don't show the names of the commenters because usually they have an image for their thumbnail that's not really acceptable in our videos and people tend to be a little bit private but this Shamar has a channel with at least one video on it so he must not be too shy. But anyway his comment was you should do a video on the 2024 eclipse that crosses the U.S. in the opposite direction of the 2017 eclipse. He's talking about that X across America. He goes on to say 2024 is the year. It made a tau over the U.S. The tau Hebrew value is 400. Now, I was already aware of these lunar eclipses that happens in 2017 and 2024 and how they actually make an X across America. But what I hadn't thought about was how the Tau or the Tav has the numeric value of 400. You see over here as we're looking at the Paleo Hebrew letters and how each of these letters have numeric value. You see the last letter in the alphabet is the Tau or the Tau and it has a numeric value of 400 just like Shamar says. Of course I had to go verify it myself but in doing so I see that the meaning of the letter also has significance. For you who are not familiar with the Hebrew alphabet each of the letters has a meaning behind them unlike the English language where letters don't mean anything at all except give us ideas on how we're supposed to pronounce words when you put two or three Hebrew letters together you could actually form a sentence out of what those words actually mean and some of you guys who are paying attention would notice that the symbol that we use as our thumbnail actually consists of the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet which is a left and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is Tav. But anyway, looking here at this letter Tav and the meanings behind it, we can see how it means a mark or a sign or a cross. 
Some of the other meanings are ownership or to seal or covenant or to join two things together. And the last, which by the time we get to the end of this video, these meanings should be way more significant to us if I actually do a good job in this video. So let's come back to those meanings. Right now, we want to concentrate on the numeric value of 400. Like I said, when I saw his comment, that part really jumped out at me because immediately it was brought back to my remembrance. Genesis chapter 15 verse 13, where our father is giving Abraham a prophecy about American slavery. You see right here, it says, and he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed should be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now, I understand there is a little bit of confusion around this prophecy because many people, a lot of which who are into replacement theology, would like to say that the Israelites were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. But that is absolutely not the case. Because when you study the dates given in the Bible surrounding the birth of Abraham and the crossing of the river Jordan, you see that that was actually a total of about 430 years or 440 years. But we see here from the time chart of him in history that that 430 years actually includes the time before Jacob was born and even Isaac was born. And it also includes the time in which Israel dwelt in Egypt in peace. You have to remember that they went to Egypt in their own free will and they only became slaves and were mistreated towards the last 40 or 50 years of the time that they were in Egypt. But for those of you who actually want to do the math on this, you see here about the time when Moses was 80 years old is when they actually came out of Egypt, which would have been around the year 2510 after the creation of Adam. If you subtract 400 years from that, you don't end up at the time in which they became slaves in Egypt, but you actually end up closer to the time that Abraham got that first covenant back there. But anyway, I know that everybody watching this video is not into replacement theology. And for those who are into replacement theology, it's going to take a lot more than just facts to convince them. So let's go on. Look back over here at Genesis chapter 15. It's talking about these people that will serve in this foreign land for 400 years and how they will be afflicted for the entire 400 years. But then it goes on to say, and also that nation which they shall serve will I judge and afterwards they shall come out with great substance. So what this is talking about is the end of the 400 year prophecy, which I'm sure you guys have heard about here in the last few years. Now, a lot of people wanted to say that that 400 year prophecy ended in the year 2019 because they mistakenly believe that that's when slavery started here in America in 1619, 400 years earlier. But we can see over here at a website called PBS.org that it wasn't actually slaves in America in 1619, but it was indentured servants in 1619. It says in 1619, the first African-Americans came to Virginia with no slave laws in place. They were initially treated as indentured servants and given the same opportunities for freedom dues as whites. In other words, these people made a contract in Africa that they would come to America and work for a little while and then gain their freedom. And that is actually what they did. There were no slaves at all in America in 1619. There were only indentured servants. 
but we see over here at nationalgeographic.com this is considered the start of the 400 years but if there were no slaves in 1619 then this 400 years actually started too early therefore while we were looking for the fulfillment of Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13 2019 was just too early I wonder if they came over here believing that they would only serve the people in the Americas for seven years and then released according to the law. I believe you're right. As you see over there in Exodus and chapter 21, when you have a Hebrew servant or a Hebrew slave, he was only supposed to serve for six years and then he was supposed to gain his freedom. I personally believe that's why they prohibited the slaves from learning how to read so they wouldn't be able to read that Bible that had just come out in the year 1611. So you're right in their seventh year, according to the covenant, they were supposed to get their freedom. But anyway, let's go on. We're over here at a website called slavevoyages.org which is a website that offers us information about the transatlantic slave trade. It actually has a database of all of the ships that made the transatlantic voyage from the year 1614. The reason I pulled this up is I wanted to see if there was in fact a slave ship that brought slaves to America in the year 1619. What we read over there on National Geographic was that it was a Dutch boat carrying only 20 Africans. That Dutch boat would hardly be considered a slave ship. So using this database, I came over to see if there was a slave ship that came to the Americas in 1619. And I actually didn't find one. From the historical record, we find that the first Africans came in 1619 to what we know today as the United States. And so we see here, according to this database, no other slave ship came to this part of the world in 1619. You see, there were plenty of slave ships in 1619, but they went to New Spain. Veracruz, Cartagena, Spanish Caribbean, Buenos Aires, but none actually reached the shores of what we call America in 1619. So I continued looking down to see when was the first slave ships to actually make it to America. And we see here in 1620, there was no slave ships to arrive on American soil. And then in 1621, we see that one landed in Laguara and Guatemala and Trujillo, but none to America in 1621. Well, what about 1622? We see something called Hispaniola in 1622, which all of these nations to me sound like some type of Hispaniola countries. And then we see there that there was one that arrived in Spanish Americas in 1622, but there were none that landed on what we know as English America in 1622. And then we see by 1623 there's a lot of ships landing on the Spanish Americas and for the first time we see the Santa Cruz landing on the Americas in 1623 it says port unspecified this would have been a slave ship coming from West Central Africa which for many of the African Americans here who have done their DNA tests this part of the world will sound familiar because this is where you find Cameroon and Benin there in West Central Africa. And then the next time you see a slave ship landing is what's known as the Americas, which could very possibly be the United States of America as we know it today, landed in 16 and 24. 
So is this what this X across America is actually pointing to? That's supposed to be completed on April the 8th, 2024? Well, one thing we can say for sure is that slavery in America didn't start in 1619. It started much closer to the year 2024. In fact, when we look back over here at the National Geographic at this chart, we see even as late as the year 1655, the slave trade in America really hadn't got started in earnest. You see right there as it's talking about the rise of tobacco. It says the early tobacco industry relied heavily on indentured white labor. But those impoverished Europeans, unlike Africans, had the chance to win freedom and land at the end of their contracts. So even up to the year about 1700, it appears as though there was more Caucasian indentured servants here in America than there were African ones. And it was really only after the year 1700 do we see a sharp increase in the number of slaves that were being brought to America with its peak being in the year 1808. So my point is in all of this is that slavery in America didn't really start in 1619. But anyway, let's study this 2024 date a little bit closer. To see if we can find some biblical support for the idea that this 2024 eclipse is actually pointing to the 400th anniversary of American slavery. Now, there are many people who want to say that slavery ended in the late 1800s, but if you ever watch the movie Roots real closely at the very end of that series, you'll see that slavery didn't end in America. Like the big boss said at the end of that movie, it changed where not only was Africans being enslaved at that point, but also Caucasians. In other words, those impoverished white people who were indentured servants became slaves as well after the emancipation of proclamation. So not only are the Africans expecting to get their freedom back, but the Caucasians and everybody else is too. But anyway, looking back over here at this image of this X across America that ends in the year 2024. Look how it starts in the year 2017. So first, let's understand what biblically significant happened in the year 2017 that could be pointing to all of this. And for that, we need to jump over to the book of Revelation and chapter 12. You see right there in verse 1 where it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. For the first and only time in human history did this event actually happen in the year 2017. It was on September the 23rd, 2017, when if you would have looked up in the heavens, you would have saw a star alignment that portrayed exactly what we see over there in the book of Revelation and chapter 12. It is only in the third testament of the Bible in chapter 20 that we understand what this was that our father was showing us by way of the heavens back there on September the 23rd, 2017. Verse 53 says, My disciple John, prophet and seer, held before in his ecstasy a woman dressed in the sun, a radiant virgin of light. Talking about those star constellations. Verse 54 says, That woman, that virgin, is Mary, whose womb will once again conceive, not a new redeemer, but a world of men who sustain themselves by her love, faith, and humility. So this is actually talking about us. Like we were talking about at the beginning of this video, Israel doesn't point to a race of people, but to all of humanity. 
And 2017 was the beginning of the great awakening that all of humanity is going through right now. You see down here in verse 5 of Revelation in chapter 12 where it says, And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. This again is talking about us. This is saying the same thing that we saw over in the third testament of the Bible. We just have to think spiritually. It goes on to say, And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. It's talking about how we are caught up to God and to his throne. Now, of course, before 2017, many people thought materialistically and they thought that this would be a fly away rapture moment. But what we learn this to actually be here so many years later is a spiritual caught up. In other words, a large portion of humanity has turned their focus off of the material world and put themselves in a position to become spiritualized. So you should ask what gets us from September the 23rd of 2017 to the year 2024. Well, if you scroll down to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6, you see that the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's about three and a half years starting in the year 2017. That takes you to the year 2021. And then you scroll even farther down and look at verse 14. You see that there is another period of time which appears to be about three and a half years, which takes you into the year 2024. And if you look at Revelation chapter 13 and verse five, it is also talking about a three and a half year period. And we know that this starts in about 2021 from what we read over in chapter 12. So this 42 months actually is the reign of the Antichrist that ends in about 2024. And while we're at it, let's look at chapter 11, where we see overlapping timelines, this time talking about the two witnesses. You see in verses 2 and 3 that after 42 months, the two witnesses are empowered. And if that 42 months clock started in 2017, they will receive their power in the year 2021 and they will prophesy for 1,203 score days, taking them to the year 2024. But what's really interesting in chapter 11 is we see after their prophecy ends, they're killed where they lie dead in the street for three and a half days. Then there is a huge earthquake. All of these could be actually pointing to the year 2024. We can go on and on about the prophecies related to 2024, but I think you get the point. So let's go on. So being curious, I came in to look to see what date is that on the Hebrew calendar, talking about April the 8th, 2024. And it falls on or about the first day of the first month on the Hebrew calendar, which is very interesting when you go over and you look at the events of the scripture that happened on that day in history. Going all the way back to the flood of Noah, how on the first day of the first month, the waters of the flood had dried off the earth. That's when Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked out and behold, the face of the ground was dry. In chapter 40 of Exodus, we see that's when they got the word of the Lord to build the tabernacle. And in verse 17 of that same chapter, we see that it was a year later when they had actually constructed that tabernacle on the very same day. The first day of the first month. This gets even more interesting when you jump down to Second Chronicles in chapter 29 and verse 17. And it's talking about Solomon's temple and how he sanctified it on the first day of the first month. The very first tabernacle being reared up 
and the very first temple being sanctified all on the same day of the year well when you look down to Ezra and chapter 7 you see in verse 9 that Ezra is leading the people out of Babylon towards Jerusalem to go rebuild or to build the second temple you see in verse 10 of chapter 17 how after they had built that temple they started to separate themselves from the Gentiles on the first day of the first month and in Ezekiel chapter 29 we see that a word of the Lord came against Egypt on the first day of the first month and in chapter 45 of the book of Ezekiel we see that the second temple was cleansed on the first day of the first month could this third temple be cleansed on the first day of the first month actually cleansing the tabernacle and or the temple on the first day of the first month goes all the way back to Moses so to have this X across America to end on or about the first day of the first month makes it even more significant in my humble opinion so let's go back over there and let's look at this letter once again the letter Tav this X in the Hebrew language or the cross it means a mark a sign it speaks of ownership or to seal a covenant or to join two things together and the last are these all hints of what we can expect in April of the year 2024 this X or this cross being placed across America appears to be pointing to the sailing of the father's people by way of the covenant that he has been making with them for the past seven years and when you think about the third temple that would be our fleshly bodies being joined with their spirit nature making what we know as the third temple that would be the two things joined together but anyway tell me what you think I think this prophecy given to Abraham about the 400 years will be fulfilled in the year 2024 and we're being given a not so subtle hint by way of this X or this towel across our country not to mention that the exact spot of the X is a town with a name that means little Egypt I think we should all be praying to be caught away in the wilderness with the bride and that man child that we read about over there in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation 